I think there's a lot of people straying to the coffee in the back. I'm going to talk about beer. Um, so I'm hoping that that is enough of a, um, of a uh, challenge to, for you to, uh, to stay here or even stay awake. I'm also going to challenge a little bit um, what we just heard about TV. Um, and I'm going to um, possibly hand out a red card to the TV industry. And I'm going to share with you some data and some insights that we've gathered over the last uh, uh, two years, two and a half years that our company has been in existence to, um, to, to explain to you why we think there is maybe uh, a bit of a call to action there. First of all, I am uh, Martin Albarda, as you just heard. I am VP of Global Connections at uh, Enhorser Bush InBev. Um, I can also be reached on every conceivable platform that you uh, might have access to. I'm typically at Malbarda at any one of these, so feel free to reach out. Um, our company is big, has scale. Um, we are relatively new, as I mentioned. We uh, are the product of many mergers and acquisitions. Um, and since um, uh, late 2008, we formed uh, as Anheuser Busch InBev, and we are the largest beer brewery in the world. Um, and we have a lot of really big brands, about 200 um, around the world, um, some of which you may have heard of, and some of them um, you may have never heard of, but that's because beer is still inherently, uh, with a few exceptions, a uh, local business. Um, we do believe in branding and brands, and brands are ultimately our ticket to, um, to our uh, results and top line growth. So we are firm believers in brands, and we have uh, $14 billion brands in retail value uh, in our portfolio. We're working very hard to protect those and to maybe bring about a couple more um, in the years to come. I don't need to tell you that the world has changed and is changing and continues to change very, very fast. Um, we all know that. We experience it on a daily basis. Um, and that really isn't uh, the point uh, of this uh, conference. That's probably actually uh, why we're all sitting here. Um, what is interesting is that the haves and have-nots in terms of the change are really beginning to uh, sort of uh, uh, align. Um, the, um, the, the typical thought that you know, the, there's, a, there's a great digital divide between people that, that have access and do not have access is changing very, very rapidly. Um, in this slide, you can see that actually some of the upcoming markets um, are really ranked much higher in terms of uh, growth and penetration um, and, uh, and numbers uh, as uh, maybe a, a more established market like the US. Um, and uh, and that, uh, that trend is continuing. Um, what is also interesting is that it is not only a U.S. play. Um, China is coming up fast. I hope you attended yesterday the session of the, the th uh, one of uh, the, one of the sessions where three of the key Chinese players were uh, were um, uh, here to uh, to share with you uh, what uh, what they're accomplishing, and it's really fascinating to see that um, you know the, the the Chinese are coming also in this space and where they were maybe in the past. Uh, copy pasting what uh, what the rest of the world was doing now that they're flush with capital and talent and 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 have a lot of uh, uh, established uh, uh, relationships with consumers I think we're not very far off from a moment that they will start leading innovating and we will copycat uh, or copy pasting uh, from them we are traditionally a television based company uh, we have uh, had tremendous success with television and um, as an industry, uh, both in, in beer as well as in maybe beverage, as well as in uh, uh, consumer product goods, uh, I think we've always been very, very reliant on television. More and more, we, however, we believe that television has become the crutch that we've been leaning on for far too long. And what is interesting is when I started in um, September of 2009, um, the picture was at the top left uh, in terms of our media split. Uh, that was sort of what I found. And in 2011, this year, you can see that really, in terms of television, not much has changed. What has changed is that the share of digital has obviously increased quite a bit. Um, and these are published numbers. And published numbers are really not very accurate, because the reality of our digital investment is far more uh, profound and pronounced than, uh, than what you can uh, gauge from, uh, from published numbers. And uh, later in the presentation, I'll share with you where, we're actually are, where we actually are and where we think we're going. But we are very television dependent. Um, we've always liked television. It's worked really well for us. But there are some problems uh, uh, with TV. And we really need to probably rethink that strategy uh, more so today than maybe even two years ago. But I think we should have really started a little bit earlier. Let me talk to you about what some of these problems are. This is problem number one. In terms of television costs, the only way seems to be up. Um, and in terms of delivery, it keeps on creeping down. 
And it's not just the delivery of absolute audiences, because in some markets it's actually stable, um, and, uh, and in a, a few markets actually still going up slightly. But what is really going down is the uh, relevance and engagement scores of TV advertising, especially for young adults. So cost is going up, delivery is going down, and especially engagement um, uh, uh, of that delivery is going down for certainly what is one of our key target audiences. And in terms of cost, let me share you some data that Accenture um, uh, coll uh, collected. So here we have uh, Indonesia, uh, plus 22.5 expected. Here we have Thailand, plus 12.5. Vietnam, plus 22.5. Um, and it's not just an Asia-Pacific problem. Uh, here's Russia, uh, television at the bottom there, plus 19. Here's Ukraine, also plus 19. And it's not just uh, an emerging markets uh, problem. Here's the US, expected for next year, 10.5. So if I think of television as a raw material for marketing, and if I would consider sort of increases in cost of my raw materials at these levels over the next couple of years, because there's other categories coming into TV advertising, especially in the emerging markets like cars, financial industries, um, uh, telecoms. So if the, if, the, if the cost of my raw material just keeps on going up, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna be forced almost to look at alternatives, either to drive down the price or, or an alternative in ingredient in my mix that can, uh, can deliver the same audience or the same kind of uh, results uh, in a different way. The second problem with TV is that this has always been our belief. If we have certain outputs like GRP, CPM, cost per GRPs, we can load those into volume, uh, volume metrics uh, or other kinds of allocation models, and then we do a cost allocation, and that will determine how much uh, TV we uh, need to spend. And apparently the answer for the last three years has been 63% globally for our brands. Right? Um, I'm not so sure that that model is really right. I'm not sure it was right in the old days because the GRP religion was probably a little bit too strong for what it really was. Um, but secondly, especially in today's day and age, if I go back to what I said earlier in terms of published data not being correct, well, everybody here is doing probably share of voice, share of market uh, analysis. Um, that share of voice is based on inaccurate, incomplete, and not relevant data anymore. Uh, the share of market is probably relatively accurate, but what does that really tell you? And then you pump that into your, uh, into your uh, predictive model and out comes a number, and that's apparently what we run with. In the absence of any kind of hard data, and in today's day and age, that is really not acceptable anymore. But it goes a step further, because none of that really relates to real volume, real share, and real brand KPI results. So this model is obviously flawed and potentially um, unrepairably broken. And then the final problem is that, um, not just for TV, but across all connections, this old model of planning where we went, you know, we started from the brand and we ended up with um, a, uh, a plan that would reach ultimately a consumer is no longer the, the model anymore. And certainly at AB InBev, we like to really put the consumer at the center and then work our way towards a, a plan that is most relevant for that particular consumer. So, if you keep on doing what you're doing and you're hoping for a different result, according to Einstein, that's the definition of insanity. And so we need to clearly stop doing that and come up with something, uh, something different. So what if there was a medium that is highly relevant for a young uh, uh, adult target audience or you know, whatever other targets you're after, has mass distribution, could deliver highly targeted audiovisual messages with very little waste, is more measurable than anything we've seen to date, and where you only pay for those actual targets audience members that have completed viewing your commercial. Wait a minute, that medium exists. It's called online video. And people, especially again in the young adult target audience, are migrating significantly to watching online video. We saw it yesterday with the uh, UCO presentation from, uh, from China. I have some data here from the UK. You can see that uh, the 25 to 34 year olds um, sort of the, the audience for, for online video doubling versus the, the all adults target and is growing at a very fast clip. Here's the US um, for the World Cup. Yes, in the US they do watch the World Cup. Um, and in fact, they're watching more and more of it and, and football in general. Um, during the World Cup in uh, 2010, there was a significant lift especially accomplished through 
non-regular TV viewing. As you can see, that's, uh, that's the sort of highlighted there on the right. But in Asia, it's the same thing. Here's data from China. It's an excellent study from, uh, from Starcom uh, called the Yangtze uh, study. You can uh, find information about it online. It's, it's really uh, very good if you're interested in China and China media habits. It's, uh, it's really recommended. Um, in China, you can see here that in terms of media habits reach in the past month, uh, digital is the second uh, largest medium after TV. And if you think across screens for China, actually what you're seeing here, that, and this again, we saw that yesterday in a presentation from, uh, from uh, Yoku as well, is that video clips through computer is now basically the number one uh, activity in terms of where they watch um, their content. So it seems like we should be migrating dollars significantly into online video. Um, the question is, does that work? Can that really replace or at least be a viable alternative to TV? We didn't know, but we decided to test it. So in the last uh, 12 months, we have uh, in three different markets with three completely different brands, uh, with very sort of different uh, market circumstances, we've tested shifting significant dollars from TV in online video. We did it with uh, Bud Light in the US, we did it for Bex in Germany, and we did it for that brand that everybody can pronounce, Chernivitsky, in Ukraine. You need a few beers in order to really appreciate the name of that brand. Um, I'm going to not show you all of them, but, but basically the, 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 the results are all kind of similar. Here are the results for the TV campaign in Germany. Um, one of the problems that we faced with our German uh, media mix was that um, the core target audience for Bex was always under-delivered no matter how hard we tried. So that was really a problem. And what we were trying to do with online video is to basically uh, plug that gap. The results were phenomenal. Um, not only did we plug the gap, we uh, actually increased our aided ad awareness, we increased our recognition, and we increased, most importantly, our brand KPIs like favorite brand and brand love. Um, that was really significant. What we also did is spend less, because doing this was much cheaper than actually spending that same amount of money just on TV. So the shift worked. The key learns across those three markets where we did that test were, first of all, that surprise. We can uh, buy these, uh, these uh, online video GRPs at a much lower CPM than, uh, than television. There was no negative, and most of the time, actually a positive, a, a, an increased improvement in terms of effect on brand health uh, metrics. The actual target audience delivery is what I paid for. So I actually only paid for somebody that watched the 15 or the 20 or the 30 second commercial until the very last second. Try and do that on any of your uh, national network TV uh, channels. And then finally, I also had an option to offer further um, uh, a linkage to, to other content, to, to uh, relevant uh, activation uh, beyond the television commercial, because I'm online already, and that's where I'm watching it. So it worked extremely well. And so these are the, the, the real numbers of where we are in terms of the number of major markets around the world. And as you can see, the shift is already uh, underway, and we're going to continue. For next year, we have told most of our markets to shift up to 20% of GRPs, not money, GRPs, from TV to online video. Um, and that is going to be a, a significant change because it works. The presentation that I gave uh, to, uh, to our uh, team in, uh, in every market is that I ended the presentation basically with, what are you waiting for? But wait, there's more. I like it. Today, we have a direct relationship with over 10 million people that have said yes to the invitation to become friends with our brands, um, to be connected with us um, through Facebook, in Russia, through um, uh, Vicontacte, in uh, Brazil, through Orkut, and so on and so forth. So we have uh, a direct relationship with over 10 million people. You heard from uh, Carolyn earlier this morning that she figures it's about 130, 140 people for each uh, uh, person that is, uh, has, uh, has friends on Facebook. We took a conservative look and said, oh, if 10 million people reach 100, 100 people each, we're reaching a billion people. That is mass media. That is something that I can do every day. That is a Super Bowl or a, or a World Cup final on a daily basis, directly don't need to go to any of the major media networks to go and buy a GRP. 
I can do it now with the push of a button. You've also heard from Carolyn, and I totally agree with that, that ultimately the numbers is not really what matters. It is how we engage with those uh, one billion people in a relevant and engaging manner that really matters. I love the example that we saw in the previous uh, uh, presentation uh, from China. I have a similar uh, story to tell with something that we're doing for Budweiser globally. Um, P&G created the soap opera. What we're trying to do is to pioneer big branded entertainment on a global scale. And what we're doing is we're trying to bring together all of the major properties that we have, where we've already invested significant money, whether it's the World Cup, whether it's the Major League Baseball, whether it's movies uh, uh, in Hollywood, the NBA. Oh, wait, they're not playing. Um, we'll find an alternative for that. But all of those properties and our media properties and put all of that together in a uh, branded entertainment uh, platform. We call that the big time. What we're offering a, uh, a, a group of consumers, or what we have offered, because we're actually filming the, the series right now, is um, to, uh, to allow consumers to pursue that one dream that they've always had, but for some reason never managed to, uh, to pursue. So you wanted to be a race car driver, you wanted to be a fighter pilot, you wanted to be a, a major league baseball or a football star, and so on and so forth. But for some reason, something happened along the way, and you didn't get to pursue your dream. We're giving those people a second chance. So we had a, um, a uh, uh, global sort of uh, process of finding these applicants, and we're now filming episodes. We're going to have those episodes uh, broadcast um, through our own network and through um, uh, uh, media networks um, that are already uh, in existence. Think have uh, seven episodes of one hour each. We'll have one asset, so one will focus on racing, one will focus on football, one will focus on baseball, and so on and so forth. And it will, each episode will have one winner. And so we're bringing together the best-in-class storytelling, which is uh, the partners that we work with, they're Fremantle and um, uh, Radical Media. We're bringing our own assets into play, and we're going to combine it into branded content. And we're going to uh, distribute that direct, because that's our first media. We can reach a billion people. Why wouldn't we do that? So through YouTube, our own uh, uh, branded channel there, through Facebook, where we have obviously our, uh, our friends, we will bring the big time into the big time. So conclusions. TV will remain an important medium, but not always. Certainly not at any cost, and not for all targets and campaigns. Online video today is the cable and satellite of 20, or in some markets, 30 years ago. It's time to move in now. And advertisers can and will increasingly go direct. Because we can, and there's no need to go and buy space from a middleman when you have a direct relationship. So a red card for TV advertising. I agree with, the, um, uh, with Rahul from, uh, from Unilever that maybe it's a little bit too early for that. TV is still an important medium. But at minimum, it's a yellow card. You cannot continue to ask more deliver less in a less relevant way and get away with it. Thank you very much.